I can't call it, man. We've we've driven like a hundred miles today, going up and down the beach looking for glass minnows. It's the glass minnow run. You guys probably already saw the drone footage. We got Adam Malusi. What's up, We got boys? the boys. We got Yame, Sam Brown, Daniel behind the camera, and we were all we're all basically just like messing around right now. And we saw a bunch of little tarpon kind of just jumping. And I just casted the fluke, just thinking, what the heck, maybe it's out there. I got smoked. Yeah, like Victor said, we were literally sitting here about to go home. It's, we've been grinding all day, looking up and down the beach for coons. Finally saw a couple rolling. There's not even, they're not even on bait and just all took a cast and Victor hooked up. All right, talk to the camera. You're making a video, Victor. Yeah. Nice. Cameraman Dan. Good. Yeah, dude. Thank goodness Dan's here to get us the money shots. I still can't believe I have this thing on. I, what? Like, we were about to give up and go home, weren't we? Dude, we were walking I knew it was going to happen. I knew someone was going to be walking back. Dan goes, Victor, cast Dan goes, should I take the camera? I'm like, no. Oh! So with these big fish, even a 60 pound tarpon, especially in these swells and surf, they'll kick your butt. And tarpon, like anyone knows, anyone who knows anything about tarpon, they're like the hardest fish to land. They break you off, they cut you off, they jump, they spit the hook in their mouths. You guys are going to see in a second here if we land it, how hard they are to even get the hook through there. So when you get them in the surf, you got to really play them. So the last thing that fish wants to do, the last thing this fish wants to do is get caught between the swells. He wants that deeper water. He does not want to be anywhere near us. So every time we get him close to the trough, like Sam's gonna go and lead him. Every time he gets close to the trough, he shoots back out. You really gotta kinda use the swells to your advantage and trying to get the swells to push your fish up on the beach. Yeah, tarpon are super hard to land, so Sam. All right, Victor, so what do you think? This time he's gonna be able to grab him? This is it, this is gonna be it. Boys, we got it done. Yeah. That's well, like 60, 70 pound fish. Sam. Talk louder, you got the waves crashed. You got like a nice 60, 70 pound fish on the jerk bait right there. 60 pound tough one. And uh, Sam, Sam with the clutch grab right there. Yeah, that was too much. Like so, dude. All right, we're good. All right, so we try to leave the tarpon in the water as much as possible. Now I'm just going to walk him out. Watch out. Kind of revival. How'd that release go? We got it. We got it done. The best part of that fish was not only letting it go, but Sam freaking killed it, brother, with the, the grab. That was that was definitely a lot of luck in that. Yeah. You just slung it 100%. out there. And... I was just winging it. Just got lucky. Right but, place, right time. That's why you just got to keep on casting, that's baby. Right. That's but it. Let's get another one. Uh, all right, guys. We got tarpon number two on. I put one on the beach, and Sam's hooked up right now. Nice, dude, nice. Bro, it, it took a... Sam, this is your first debut on the Landshark channel. You've already been on YouTube on, on Adam's channel. Gotta get me out there, bro. Yo, he's switching to Team Landshark. How do you feel about that? But hey, I just met a sub on the beach, so that boy Henry. Since we're looking for glass minnows, when you saw the drone footage, they were pinned up against the beach in super shallow water. Tarpon are big fish. They don't like to be in shallow water. So they wait for the tide to push the minnows out, which is what they're doing now. It's almost low tide. Or they'll wait for high tide, which was during the middle of the day, which we missed, unfortunately. But, um, you know, we don't have that much light left. You guys see the sun's almost down, but it's how it is sometimes. Sometimes you gotta spend all day for that one hour window and that's what fishing's about you know it's just 
being there at the right place at the right time with the right bait with the right crew i had a ton of fun with these guys anyway right now it's just Got really hard finding fish spent a couple hours um victor just had a nice one probably the same size as this about 60 pounds um but that's after like four hours of searching man but finally paid off My boy, James! Here, boys, you're doing it. Woo. Wow. Oh, yo, that's a big one. Hey, I'm just gonna say it. Sam's hooked up on my reel. James on my rod. Lucky your rod here. Yeah, we went from zero to hero real quick, didn't zero we? Zero to three, and we might land. We might go yo, three yo, for three. Yo, yo, yo. You landed. I'm running over down here to try to help games. This is why I love land-based fishing, man. Catching fish on a boat. Nothing is more rewarding than doing it off the beach, pier, or bridge. It's what I grew up doing. It's what I love. No amount of money, no anything would ever change that. Watch a wave, watch a wave. Nice boys, nice. Hey, back up real quick, get a couple pictures in. Hi, I got a screenshot of that. Moving weight, Moving land shark. Charge. That's what happens, baby. Bro, you guys killed it. That's like the double of dreams right there. That's it, yeah, I've been waiting all season for that. That tarpon landing, we lost a lot of money on that. Two, two glasses and a hat. So, hey, I got a hat right here. Yo, it only took one tarpon for me to see what you look like without a hat on. Uh, I know, right? James, <laughs> you'll never see it again. Can we for three? Boys, can we talk, boys, about, three, that? Can we three. talk about that? Three for three on land based tarpon? That does not happen. What? That doesn't happen. Hey, if I hook one, now I'll ruin it. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll go through. We'll go through. We're talking about where you, oh, you weren't there the day. Adam fished like a week ago. You went zero for 12. Oh, for you? 12. Yep. And and Ryan hooked like six or seven. We, we landed so one. And it was the best tarpon fishing I've ever seen. Yeah. Today, worst tarpon fishing, but best like consistent bite. I don't. I, you know what I mean? Dude? It was amazing. I, if it's for you, it's for you. If you guys have ever heard that expression, today it was for us. Yeah. Hey, if you guys haven't already. Subscribe to Adam for moving weight fishing right here. Real Slayer right here. Look at this. When all that commotion was going on, I literally just threw the reel in the sand, which you cannot do with any other reel. A lot of people ask us, look at this, cover. <laughs> but that's what they're meant to do. You guys have asked me before in the comments, like, are van stalls worth the money? That completely depends. If you're a diehard fisherman who's willing to get your stuff salty, sandy, and uh, you know you're gonna be constantly dunking your reel, like watch this. Will you hold this for a sec, Sam? Watch this. Ready? They're gonna be brand new after this. You can't do that with anything else, bro. Nothing else. And now watch this. Like so. It's like brand new. Brand new. They're completely sealed. I'm not a van stall fanboy. I like them. This is not a sponsored message, but you guys have asked. You know, they're an expensive reel, but if this is what you're going to be doing, 100% worth the money. Without a doubt. I got one more thing to say. I got to give love to Tough Line, which is a big sponsor on the channel. Mustad owns them. Well, they're like co partners. 60 pound Tough Line, baby, Floro. And if you guys at home know, Tarpon are like the most aggressive mouth in the world held through and then sam 30 pound tough line braid baby so both link below and you guys can save 20 percent off both the floor carbon and the braid use my code land shark i'll have it linked below as well as on the screen that's all i got to say lights out yo 
Grab that thing. That's the one. What you know <laughs> about that, hey, baby? If anyone's gonna catch oh. one, it would be me, though. If that's a slot, that's that a Sebastian That's the snow. heaviest Sebastian yeah. slot I've ever seen in my life. Ah. NOBN, oh. right What's down there. NOBN. Here. That's a really oh. nice fish. Wait, wait, Victor, get in here with me. NLBN, Dude, I'm telling you, they catch everything. They do. That's a snot. That's a slot. Look at that. Um, tell them we're gonna have a code link it's below. It's a Chody Snook version. Um, tell them we're gonna have a code popping over here. Yeah. We're gonna have the code. Nice fish. Yeah, seriously, gotta shout out the NLBNs. Three, three quality fish caught on these guys today. So, we were gonna do just like a strictly fishing video, but Adam actually happened to catch two slots snook the other day with Sam, so we're making it a catch clean cook. And a lot of you guys always ask like, what is the most universal basic flay knife to buy for the majority of species? And I would probably say this eight inch Dexter uh, flexible flay. And you guys can actually save 20% off use code Landshark linked below as well as on the screen. So little snook right here. Snook season actually just opened up September 1st down here in Florida. A lot of times you guys see us catch them and you're like, why'd you throw it back? Well. Snook have a uh, season and also a slot, so you can't just go out and kill them whenever you want, and you can't also get whatever size you want. They have to be between 28 and 32 inches, and season opens up September 1st. And the reason I like this 8 inch knife and recommend it to most people is because um, when it comes to skinning fish, you want a longer, narrower knife, which this is. And I feel like a stiffer knife, if someone's just learning how to fillet, a flexible knife is a lot more forgiving than a um, stiff knife. There you go, look at that. Beautiful snow white meat, and uh, Dexter's make quick work of any fish. Super sharp very affordable and you guys can save 20% using my code lamp shark. So the boys and I are gonna whip up some tacos, but not me. We got Chef James in the house again. I told you guys the eight inch knife. This is why I like an eight inch knife for most people because not only can you flay your fish, but watch this. Skinning is a breeze with a nice flexible long knife. Bam, just like that. We're good to go. All right, we got Chef James in the house. What are you whooping up tonight? So we're gonna do something nice and simple tonight. We're gonna do a little Mexican street corn salad versus like having it on like the cob like you normally would. We're just gonna do it in like salad form. It's easier to serve. It's like more like party appropriate. And uh, we're gonna do some tacos two ways. We're gonna do tacos fried and we're gonna do them like chili spice on there. And before I get any further, huge thank you to Cholo Soy, Clay Carnes and CJ. You guys hooked it up with the tortillas. They are, uh, it's Florida corn. They actually take the corn, they grind it up and they make the flour to make the corn in house. Like that's like unheard of. So yeah. these are gonna be lights out. And they're gonna be linked below because I mean, the game's went and this is his buddy's restaurant. So seriously, huge shout out. Cholo soy? Yep. Cholo soy? Cholo soy. Cholo soy. All right, so right here, it's gonna be like your main ingredient in the, uh, in the tacos. I cheated a little bit and got already shredded cabbage. Wow. I know, and all you have in here is the shredded cabbage, some sweet peppers, a little bit of onion. I'm gonna add some sour cream and mayo to this and a little bit of lime. And it's probably like some chili. Just like give it like that nice Mexican flavor and that nice like Spanish spice. All right, so this is a Mexican street corn. Usually it's like served on the cob and traditionally you'd like eat it right next to the truck. You know, but uh, we're gonna do it, like I said, in like a little salad form. It's just a little bit more easier, just for like a little party, you know? And traditionally, the main ingredients you don't wanna miss, obviously, are the corn. Um, you can spruce it up with whatever kind of veggies you want. I threw a little bit of cherry tomato in here, some red onion, one jalapeno diced. And your main base for this is sour cream, lime. Traditionally, it's cotija cheese, which is like a type of like Mexican parm but we just got a little Parmesan. You really honestly couldn't taste the difference, so. And then a little bit of cilantro. And uh, it's actually cilantro from uh, Vic's Buddy's farm. And it's beautiful microgreens. It's just gonna make everything look pretty and add a little flavor to it. You guys use a lot of microgreens at the restaurant? I love them, because it just like adds a little bit of a nice finish and garnish to the plate. And I have a, I have a real 
another pet peeve is unedible garnishes. You know, if you put something on a plate, I expect, you know, that it's edible. And people that like stick rosemary sprigs and things, you know, it looks nice, but it's not practical. This is practical. Microgreens, you can just eat it with your food. Either enhances the flavor or it doesn't really do anything except make it look nice. Preston, my buddy, who started this company, and I mean, I, I applaud him. It's He grew his hobby. He used to grow microgreens and he turned it into a business, which I think is so cool. Locally owned and he he delivers to a lot of restaurants, clubs, resorts, and uh, I'm gonna have all this stuff linked below. And the way Preston explained it to me is, it, whether it's cilantro, broccoli, whatever plant or herb it may be, it's like the baby version of it and it's super nutrient dense. And it's like, the flavor is magnified. So if you're eating regular cilantro and you got a microgreen cilantro, it's like 10 times stronger and just that much more powerful and potent. And I'm, I'm happy we're putting them in the tacos. We got James to almost 2,000 followers on Instagram. Let's see if we can get him to 3,000. Let's do it. So if you guys haven't already, follow my boy James on Instagram. Yames too, I'll have it on the screen right here. So this is the slaw that's for going for the base of the tacos. Um, like I said before, all of this shredded cabbage, a little bit of onion, a little bit of sweet peppers, and then just like whatever, like, whatever spices you really want to use. Like go for like the Mexican forward stuff, smoked paprika, garlic powder, cayenne. And other than that, like, you can do this however you want. You don't have to use mayo. You can just use straight vinegar or any kind of citrus. I'm using lime in this. So in here we have half cornmeal, half cornstarch. And we're gonna do a beer batter, but whenever you're doing anything carbonated, you gotta do the carbonation last, right, James? Yep, keeps the air in there. When you um, do any type of batter, you wanna do the liquid part last because the air is gonna be in there. And that air and that carbon dioxide what makes your batter and your fish real fluffy and airy. Coriander's gonna give it a good freshness. You can't do a meal without garlic powder. Although, I must say, the last video we did, we did not use any garlic powder for the first time in Land Shark Outdoors history. I tried. And then a little bit of cayenne. Because you can't make tacos or a Mexican dish without a little heat. All right, so this is the uh, avocado, this is your base for your avocado crema. It's three ripe avocados, um, a little bit of sour cream, salt and pepper, a little bit of your spices that we've been using continuously throughout the day. Um, paprika, garlic powder, cayenne, if you like spice. Finishes off like super fresh and nice. And then herbs right at the end, continuously using these nice cilantro. And that's pretty much it. All right, so this is the, uh, this is the, like the spiced one that's not fried. So we're just gonna start out with a little bit of coriander, paprika. It's almost like a Mexican blackening spice that we're making ourselves. A little bit of garlic powder. And I'm just winging it. This is the kind of thing you can just look in, look in your little Lazy Susan or something and just pick out all the spices that you have. A little bit of chili powder. This is how you properly check to see if your oil's hot enough. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. No water? Look at this. All right, you know what? I'm gonna go sit down. Is your mind blown? Yeah, so if you guys don't know what Vic was talking about last video where we cooked the snails, or a couple videos ago, I, I grabbed a little bit of water and splashed in there to check if it was hot. I always do it, never have problems. <laughs> until the one time. Until the one time, yeah, until the one time Victor's cooking snails and starts splashing in his face. <laughs> so this is like a, your typical beer batter. You can honestly use whatever beer you want. This is just Corona Light, keep with the theme, you know? And you use beer or whatever, anything carbonated because it adds air and adds like nice fluffiness and crispiness to the fish. And you can kind of just eyeball it yourself. The secret to this is you want, you want to get your hands in there and that helps you to create that, that air. And obviously, if you need more than one beer, you can get another beer in there. This, yeah, so this is the fancier side of it. I have the, the fried fish rolling right now at the same time I'm doing this, trying to like time it out kind of perfect. So once again, the fun part, guys. This is the, uh, the plate up. Victor came with these nice little taco racks. We're just gonna lay the tacos in there like that. Real rustic and simple. If you have some that like, you pile them up like that, I have a tendency to stick together. But we have so many, so it's gonna be totally fine. Lay them in there like that. Have your fish down first. Nice crispy fish. We're gonna do a little of the blackening spice one. A little scoop of the slaw. 
the streak one you guys saw me make earlier. Just a little dab of that on the plate. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy fancy at all. This is the avocado crema. Just a little dollop of that on top. And if you guys really want to, you know, get fancy, you can do like little dots on the plate, whatever you want. And that's essentially it. And we're finished with a little of the cilantro. Lights out. Lights out. That's it, boys. Chef lights out. Who votes for Yams to start a YouTube channel? I'm right, not even dude, kidding. I'm on. not kidding. Raise I do. Hands. Everyone in the comments, drop a comment below if you vote for Yam to start a YouTube channel. Look, Seriously. look, are you kidding me? Look at that. that. Is what insane. are you kidding me, bro? I am so excited. And I'm excited. Cheers and shout out to James for this wonderful give a little round of Thank applause. Thank you, James. Bro. This is the most lights out thing. Look I've at ever this. Seen. I got a. Hey, I got the chef's plate. Look I kind of stole bro. it, but unreal. unreal. I'm gonna take the first bite. All right, and we're gonna see how it. The silence is killing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Dude, wow. I have no words. I it's can't so. Call it's refreshing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Every, like the flavors in there just pop. It's so refreshing. Everything in here is amazing. I love it. All right, that's all I have to say. You know what? Everything compliments yeah, everything. Yeah, really for hot. sure. We're missing Yo, Brooke's dad. We are missing Brooke's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chris needs to be here right now. That's he needs honestly, a heart. We need a heartfelt comment from him right now. Bro, like, Best fish tacos I've ever had in my life. Yeah, if Alex is saying that, wait. you know it's good. <laughs> Corn tortillas, completely different um, flavor and aspect to the fish taco. I know a lot of people, especially Western people, are used to flour tortillas. If you guys have never tried like an authentic Mexican corn tortilla, I'm gonna have, what was it called? Papa Cholo Soy. It's a restaurant, right? It's a restaurant. I'm gonna have it linked below because it is, I mean, it's really good. Just authentic Florida corn, homemade corn tortillas, delicious. And um, he really is a good chef, man. Yeah, like, a good chef, bro? He's just. Unreal. What is Unreal. this, Victor? Seriously, that, what is this, James? Street corn. Mm -hmm. It's so good. He just knows what he's doing, and it really shines through his food. So um, let's take a bite of this Mexican street corn, which I've never had. I never had raw corn like that straight off the husk. Delicious. I mean, just look at how pretty that is. Look at all those colors pop in there. Unreal. Big shout out to James once again. If you guys haven't already subscribed to Adam's channel, Bricky's behind the camera. What do you guys all think of the food? Dude. Lights out. Lights, Lights out. out. Best fish tacos ever. I can't. I can't. Yeah. I don't know what to say. They were unique. Like they were. They weren't like any fish tacos I've ever had. Like the, the flavors were popping. He it was good. The sauce. He did he bring. The he had the he has it in his back pocket, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> Just whips it out. Whips All right. Out. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video.